In this video, we show you what thermals are like and also give a practical example from a real flight. People often ask, how can you stay in the air for so long without any wind? Well, the trick isn't necessarily the wind, it's the updrafts, also known as thermals, that the pilot has to find. Where thermals form depends on many factors. When the sun heats the ground, it causes a pocket of air above it to heat up. This requires some time and depends on the amount of solar energy and the reflectance of the surface. Different surfaces react differently. Asphalt or stone are excellent sources for heating up quickly, while water or forests tend to absorb the energy and release it later. When gliding, the pilot is constantly looking for thermals. This is a challenging task and requires constant concentration besides the pilot's normal duties. Some good indicators are cumulus clouds because they tend to be at the upper end of the thermal, so we can expect some updraft underneath. If we want to use those thermals, we have to understand how they form and how they behave. As the air heats, it becomes less dense and starts to rise, creating a thermal updraft. A small trigger, a wind gust or even a tractor in the field can help to release the pack. This rising air bubble forms a tube that can continue to ascend as long as the ground below it remains warm and the surrounding air is cooler. As the thermal bubble rises, it cools and eventually reaches a point where it can no longer rise due to the surrounding air being of the same temperature or the atmosphere becoming too stable. At this point, the thermal begins to dissipate and the bubble gradually loses its upward momentum. Depending on the current atmospheric layering, dew point and temperature, the rising air begins to condensate at a certain height, forming a cloud. This level is called cloud base. The higher the base, the better, because we can use more of the updraft. If there is too much cloud coverage, preventing the ground from heating up, the thermals lose their energy source. They gradually weaken and eventually dissipate until they die. And with them, the clouds die as well. Now, let's have a look to a practical example. Our pilot is flying over this area and gradually losing altitude, so he's on the lookout for potential thermals. One method to find them is to imagine running barefoot over the ground. Where it feels hot, there's a good chance of catching a thermal. In this scenario, there are several possibilities, such as open fields, cities, or the edge of the treeless ridge. However, one feature stands out, the quarry. Stones absorb heat well, and we hope to find an updraft there. Okay, let's head to the quarry. The plan would be to circle exactly above the expected updraft to gain enough altitude to continue flying. Sounds great, right? Unfortunately, life is not that simple. The wind is complicating our plans because it offsets the updraft. So how do we locate our thermal tube? Well, fortunately, there's often a cloud at the top of the updraft. By imagining a line between the thermal source on the ground and the cloud above, we can make a fairly accurate estimate. If we stick to our old plan, we will struggle to find the core of the updraft.
Here, our pilot has a sink rate of minus 1.6, which is about one meter higher than the actual best sink rate of this glider. He is heading to the quarry, but with some offset to the left because the pilot knows the wind direction. He aims at the theoretical extension of the updraft. Soon, we will see what happens next. And finally, here it is, the urgently needed updraft. First we feel it physically, then we see it on the variometer. Our pilot waits three or four seconds before he starts circling. Maybe he was a tick too late, but after the second circle, he was able to center the core and he can happily enjoy the updraft. Notice that the pilot tries to maintain a constant bank angle and a constant speed. The wind will give him a similar offset as the thermal tube, so he will stay in the updraft. We shouldn't lose our concentration while thermaling. Small corrections are always necessary. At this point, it looks like we lost our thermal, at least partially. During half of the circle, we have a sink rate and no climbing. Let's go for another run approaching the updraft in another way. The quarry is now quite far away. An estimation of the position of the ascending tube is difficult. But if we fly towards the thermal tube against the direction of the wind, then there is a high chance that we will find the updraft again, because our flight path and the updraft have to meet somewhere. again. The variometer shows plus two meter per second. Let's go circling until the upper end of the thermal. Please note that this simulation of a thermal tube is only a rough estimate of what is actually going on. The aim is to provide a general understanding of the situation.
With a quick look at the altimeter, we can see that we have gained around 650 meters in altitude. We started at 600 and left the thermal after the second run at 1150 meters. This is a nice situation for heading to our next waypoint. Of course, this can be done better, but it should reflect the real world. In this video, we definitely did not cover all aspects of thermaling. There's much more to tell, such as tear off edges, entering the thermal, centering the core, blue thermals, cloud streets, overdevelopment, McCready theory, and much more. Watch out on this YouTube channel for more educational information about this topic.